Defining greatness in the NFL will always be the subject of debate. When you say it's the number of Super Bowls, people like to point out there was an NFL before the Super Bowl. When you say it's the total number of championships, people find some other reason. Either way, without math, you can never win. And today, we're going to mathematically define which franchise is currently the greatest in NFL history. Get ready to fire up those comments, internet warriors. Before I get into this, I want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. SeatGeek is an app that aggregates ticket prices from all over the web, gives them a color-coded and numerical rating to let you decide what's a good deal, lets you see the view from your seats before you buy, and is done safely and securely right on your phone. I think the color-coded rating is great because nobody wants to overpay for a bad experience and everyone likes a happy ending. Speaking of not overpaying, download the SeatGeek app from the link below and enter in the code FPG in the Me tab and get $20 back on your first order. Straight cheddar. Seat geek! Okay, so probably nobody is going to be happy with this video. Just like they say, you can please some of the people some of the time and all of the people none of the time, but what you can't make is anybody freaking happy on YouTube. That's what they say. So when you get to the end of this video and you're ready to comment some serious venom, remember people, only one team's fan base is going to be happy, but don't worry, I'll probably throw some jabs at them too. Let's start with a mathematical criteria for this exercise. I use champion championship percentage and overall one loss record last time to determine that the Cardinals are the worst franchise but the best has to be a little bit more complicated than that. Obviously, we're going to include Super Bowls and we will include NFL championships, but to me, that's not good enough. We have to include regular season success, division championships, all that stuff. Also, winning the offseason doesn't count for anything, Skins fans. So in that spirit, I devised a scoring system with waiting. And before my fellow nerds jump on me for my equations and criticize my math, remember, you are free to do your own analysis and I'm also the one trying to put objectivity into a subjective subject. Real quick though, one stat that we can all agree on is, so here are the major criteria I used as I put together the spreadsheet. And if I'm busting out spreadsheets for you, I hope that gets a like. I mean spreadsheets for y'all. And if you can't tell, I love math. I'm not the best or most thorough at it, but it can pretty much tell you everything you need to know. First category I went with is actually a null, total number of games played, just to get an idea of longevity in the league and understand if this exercise is truly value-based versus accumulative. If these terms are confusing, just stick with me. I'll do my best to explain what they mean. Next is the highest weighted category, Superb Al wins. I'm sorry, but in the modern era of the NFL, winning the Super Bowl has the most value to a franchise, the fan base, the media, pretty much everyone. Except in St. Louis, apparently that didn't mean sh but for Super Bowl wins, you get 10 points per win. Then I count Super Bowl appearances. It's not necessarily good to lose a Super Bowl, but just getting there is a big deal. For appearances, you get four points. For the historians here, I did bring into account NFL championships once again. However, they only count for one point as NFL championships are an opportunity not afforded to every team. There were less teams in the league when they occurred, and in general, the rules and development of the game varied, especially in the league's infancy. Though luckily in football, there isn't something similar to what we had in baseball, the dead ball era. That came later. From here, I wanted to delineate the haves and have-nots by totaling up the NFL slash Super Bowl championships and really de-emphasize the impact of a Super Bowl appearance. Remember, this exercise is for the history of the league, not just the Super Bowl era. Now we get into the more differentiating stats that help separate the teams that are still in the running here. We've pretty much gotten rid of all the teams that have not won a Super Bowl or appeared in one and the teams that don't have league longevity with an NFL championship. That's where I I put an emphasis on playoff wins and playoff appearances. If your team is continually making the playoffs and winning postseason games, they are giving the fan what they want. Sorry, my fellow Giants fans, consistency has to be rewarded here. Now, as we move towards the conclusion, I added in division titles, which aren't meaningless. They give you both a home playoff game and bragging rights, but they don't mean everything. And the last metric I came up with was for the regular season, which simply was games above 500. I eliminated top Ties from the one loss records because ties are freaking bullshit. A tie, really? That's about as meaningful as the closing statement of an internet argument. So ties, be gone. I gave a low point value to games above 500 and let it be applied in a negative manner because if your team is losing in the regular season all the time, then well, they suck. So we have our data set. I wish I could just skip to the end where I reveal the winner, but no. 
we have to have a build up. The Steelers benefited the most from Super Bowl wins and appearances as they got 60 points for the wins and additional 32 for their total appearances. I thought the Pats would win these two categories, but losing those Super Bowls kept them from easily sweeping this whole exercise. Can't spell delicatessen without Eli. I, I, ha I have no idea where I was going with that. I just really meant to show a picture of this. The next category really helped the Packers as they have 11 NFL championships and 14 total championships. And the stat also helped teams like the Browns and Lions not finish last. You knew I would come after those two teams, even though this is a video about the best franchise in the NFL. NFL, right? And now we get into our incremental delineators with playoff wins helping vault the Cowboys and Niners into the mix. Again, I thought this would help the Pats out a bit, but remember, they were really, really bad for a long, long time. The team flying under the radar here, the Niners got helped a lot by this. And now with playoff appearances, you're going to see a clear separation between our two front runners, the Cowboys, ugh, and the Steelers, who have 61 and 60 total playoff games, respectively. Man, I'm getting nervous. Am I going to have to declare those mother bleeping Cowboys the winner here? Am I going to have to swallow all my words and crap talking? The last two categories, division championships and games over 500. The Steelers had more division championships. The Bears surprisingly have the most games above 500, except... Remember, I said the regular season isn't as important. One thing I do know, and it really validates this exercise, is that the Arizona Cardinals, who I said was the worst franchise in history in the last video about this, also finished dead freaking last in this data set. God, that has to hurt, Cardinal fan. But not as much as it would hurt me in admitting that the Cowboys are the best franchise in NFL history. Drum roll, please, for the winner. And thank God I don't have to do that as the Steelers ended up edging the Cowboys by 1.8 points. I'm sure Urinating Tree is puking right now as to the shit he's going to hear from all the Yinzers that point to this video and tell him how great the Steelers are. Other interesting finds are that the Patriots finished fourth, mostly in part to their horrible play before the late 90s. The Pack finished sixth. Their inability to win Super Bowls or get there frequently really hurt them. Somehow the Chargers finished 22nd, but I'm just mentioning that so I can say f*** you, Dean Spanos. Fuck you, Spanos. And really, I'm pretty satisfied with how the data turned out, as if you look at the top, the teams you would expect to be there are there, and if you look at the bottom, same thing. And unlike Johnny Manziel, math really does work, people. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to download the SeatGeek app from the link below and leave your visceral comments in the comment section. Like this video if you liked it, and subscribe and get those notifications if you really do like my channel. And as always, I'm Five Points Vids, and you mathematically made it to the end of this video.